high atop Bethel Church, the most heralded, the most despised talk show in all of human history. This is the talk show Hell Hates. This is Pastor Mike Online. And here we are coming to you live from a top secret broadcasting bunker here at Area 52. This is Pastor Mike, and it's overall Thursday. Actually, I snuck out of the house. Lisa didn't know I was wearing them. They're the most, for a man, they're the most comfortable pieces of clothing you can wear. If you're going to do any labor whatsoever, overalls are it. Our grandparents grew up wearing overalls. Our forefathers in the ministry preached in a pair of overalls, a suit jacket, and a bolo tie. But they wore them overalls. So I just thought I'd wear me a pair of overalls today. Good to be with you today. Um, Graceland is slowly, but we think surely, heading out of the danger zone. When I called this morning, she was... um, a little perky. You could tell she still didn't feel good. Um, Paige called me a little bit later. And uh, she was asleep. So I wasn't going to wake her up or anything like that. But uh, doing a little bit better. I appreciate everybody's prayers there. Uh, my mother, Julia Ann Hoggard. Although, don't call her Julia Ann. <clears throat> she don't like it. Call her Judy. Uh, and I don't know why. I think Julia is a beautiful name. But she likes Judy. So call her Judy. And um, she found out she's not going home Friday. That she's going home. She's going to a... Um, orthopedic rehab place not too far from the hospital and it's about 10 to 12 minutes from where she lives and where my sister lives uh, to be able to go see her of course it's right just down the road from here uh, for me so pray that I'll be able to get in and every day and just visit with her and have prayer with her and so on and uh, just continue to pray for them. We are having um, <clears throat> we're having an addictions Bible study tonight. We had one last Thursday night. Roy felt like he needed one, and uh, so we did. Uh, we held we held that for Brother Roy and uh, Brother Brian. And uh, now Sister Pam has lost her father. And, um, you know, when you when you lose somebody and you have an addiction. um, One of the things that you want. To help you get through it is your mind tells you you want what you once were addicted to. That's, that's how you're going to cope with it. You're going to get high. You're going to get drunk. Um, I remember a funeral I went to. And um, it was a family member. And um, one of their adult children... Of the lady that passed, he got out of his truck just reeking of alcohol. Um, that was his 
That was his coping mechanism. That's what he did to cope with everything. So there, there is a better way. There really is a better way. If you will cast your cares upon him, he careth for you, is what the Bible says. So we'll be talking about that tonight at 7 o'clock. We don't stream that. But I do record it. That way, if there's anything that needs to be edited out of it, then I do edit it out. Then we put it out uh, for broadcast. Um, all right. Now, I was asked a question a while back in Sunday school. And a dear saint... In our Sunday school, I asked the question, who in here does not believe in haunted houses? And she raised her hand. And it kind of took me aback a little bit, but, but I understand. I get it. Back in her day, she's a few years older than me. Back in her day, Things like dragons, cyclopses, unicorns, giants, witchcraft. Those were all co comical comedian shows. They were cartoons. They were used to laugh at. I dream of genie. Very popular 60s uh, TV show during the 60s. Very, very popular. And it's because Barbara Eaton was a really nice looking woman. But the thing is, is that it was, it was spoofing the actual idea that there is a spiritual presence in and around people that act as guides to their life. If you are a scientist of any major study or major uh, work group, you can guarantee at least one of those scientists, knowingly or unknowingly, is tapped in to that process. In other words, they have a gen associated with them. And what a gen is simply is a familiar spirit. Because a lot of a lot of them would say, how did you get this great revelation? All of a sudden now, boom, you've solved this mathematical problem. How is it that you did that in such a short time? Well, I had a dream the other night. And this thing was laid right in front of me like it was on a screen. And I was writing it down. And the first thing I did when I arose up was took out a pen and paper and started writing down everything that I could see on that chalkboard. Well, I said, good luck to you, you know, because I've written some pretty good pieces of music. And as soon as I wake up, psh, gone in the wind. So anyway, um, I do believe that there are spirits that inhabit this world, their habitation is in this world. They cannot be seen unless you want to see them. Um, they will give people ideas. They will also give people lies. Subtle lies, but damnable heresies. 
People will say, oh, I received this from the Lord Jesus last night. It's a new revelation. No, you didn't receive it from Jesus. You got it from a spirit of Antichrist, but you didn't get it from Jesus. Because if it ain't in the Bible, you didn't get it from Jesus. Let me hear you say amen to that. If you didn't get it from the Bible, it didn't come from the Holy Ghost. It's that simple. Now, I'm going to give you some biblical examples and also some um, some some video and and pictures of of what people I I don't know I guess I'm on this thing where I'm fascinated with with um, Slenderman I'm not I'm not really talking about Slenderman today I'm talking about Shadow Man but in First Samuel 16 that's where he pops up. Verse 13, that, and if you look at the verse prior to that, Saul has been instructed that the Lord will no longer speak to you by dream, by vision, by Urim, by Thummim. Um, or by the, just the word of the Lord from a prophet. God's not going to tell you anything ever again. He's not going to give you any more. God's going to leave you. He's going to abandon you. You're going to have to figure this thing out for yourself. So the next day, he knows that there's an army coming. He wants to know if he's going to make it through the day. So he goes through his 400 prophets. Oh, no, this is Ahab. That's a different story. Anyway, let's look at Saul. In, in 1 Samuel 16, verse 13, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. This was uh, Saul's beginning. Make sure I got the right text here. Yeah, here we go. And Samuel took an horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. This is when he anointed David. Because Saul, Saul had already been rejected, even though he was still on the throne. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the evil spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Oh, excuse me, but the spirit, I read that wrong, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. That was a big mistake. I saw the word uh, evil here and put it in there for some reason. That's what my brain did. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. God took his spirit away from Saul. Boom, you've got an evil spirit giving you trouble every day. It is no wonder to me. I get it. Why lost people? Turn to alcohol, drugs, whether it be uh, prescription drugs or non prescribed drugs, um, why people will turn to fornication. Multiple times with multiple people, sometimes in the same day. I know a guy.
I know a guy that does that. And um, when you don't have the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, giving you your, your daily joy, giving you your daily rest, giving you your 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 daily um, satisfaction in life, knowing that you're going to heaven when you die. So it does not matter what happens down here. The moment you kill me is fine with me. And, and especially those who study, who sit and study conspiracy theories all day long and don't really know the Bible, I feel sorry for you because it's much better to know the Bible and to know from the word of the Lord exactly what's going to happen than it is for you to be feeding off of the internet all day long, having no hope whatsoever of, you know, the insurrection's going to save us. We're going to revolutionize the country. We're going to turn it back to a Christian nation. Ha, ha, ha. Who's Christi whose form of Christianity is it going to be? It's going to be a big infighting, even amongst conservatives. So really, there's no hope for this country. So why would you study conspiracy theories and, and think the world is that we're all doomed to die? Let me ask you a question. Now that you're saved, are you ever doomed? No. Therefore, there is now, therefore, no condemnation. The word condemnation is, is a form of the word doom, condemnation. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk according to the Spirit and not according to this world. So those of you who are feeding yourself with the Word of God, that gives you hope, that gives you, uh, that makes you alive. Saul rejected that. Saul rejected it. He plainly rejected it. He's, we find him at the beginning of his life out preaching just like the other prophets are preaching. And the other prophets are standing back and going, Man, amen, Saul! Woo! Where did he get that from? And it's like, well, when God picks a man, man, he picks him. He doesn't qualify the called. He or he doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies whom he calls. And God took Saul and, man, he made him some this great pro prophecy uh, guy, prophesying over everybody, preaching the word of God. But then later on, we find him doing the same thing, only now he's naked. Ugh. Ugh. Nakedness is a form of shame. That's the spirit that's in him. So verse 15, Saul's servants said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player from, on an harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit uh, from God is upon thee, that, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well and Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a woman that can play well and bring him to me. 
or provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. So guess who they bring? David. Can it pass that when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took in harp and played with his hand? So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from Saul. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe that the type of music matters in a church? Do you believe that? Now, I didn't ask you, do you believe the type of music you prefer makes a difference? I'm asking you, do, believe, do you believe that the type of music that is used in the worshiping of God, do you believe that can make a difference in a person's life? Or how that service is going to be constructed or construed? Yes, I do. David was a young man who was very skilled in playing that harp. Had he had a piano, which they didn't have back then, I'm sure that he, he would have done amazingly well with the piano. But he's playing the harp now in front of King Saul. And whatever the music is, the spirits cannot handle the music. That's a pun on classical music. They can't handle it. So they kick David out. Because they don't like him. Now, let's look at Satan for a minute. And let's, let's ask ourselves the question. Does... Music in general play an important part in reviving ourselves personally, reviving our nation, reviving our churches. Does, a, does music can music play a part in that? I believe, yes, it does. Here's what we see about Satan in Ezekiel 28. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. So he had the sardius topaz, the diamond, the, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, uh, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. And then it says, The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee, in the day that thou wast created, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Which gives us the idea that he was at one time surrounding the throne of God with his wings unfolded, covering the glory of the Lord. Um, I have set thee so, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was first created till iniquity was found in thee. And what iniquity was Satan guilty of? 
technically all three. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. Because what is he, what is he lusting? What is he coveting? The Ark of the Covenant. And to be able to take possession of it. Tried it in Moses' days. Tried it now for some 2,000 years. There's people digging up stuff everywhere all over the earth looking for the Ark of the Covenant. Ark of the Covenant's never been found. I don't believe it will be. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. But anyway, right here. God is saying that I put all these pipes and tabrets in you built into your body musical instruments. This picture here is a man by the name of Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson was uh, from the Delta area down in the deep, deep south of southern Louisiana and liked to play the blues guitar. The only thing that, you know, was, was wrong with him was he had no musical quality whatsoever. He had, had, didn't know how to play, in other words. He didn't know how to play. The guitar. So the story is, and I believe the story, he meets at a crossroad. The old, believe it or not, the old timers used to call it an intercourse. That's what they called it. Johnson met. Slewfoot, Belial, Beelzebub, his own account telling this story, meets Beelzebub, trades in his soul. Now, Robert Johnson, if I remember right, had had Christian teachings growing up. But he sold all of that out. He, he took everything that he ever learned, tossed it out, told Satan, I'm yours. I'll do anything you want me to do. And Satan says, fine. Sign here. And all of a sudden, drops of blood coming off Robert Johnson's finger. And he stamped that blood down on that parchment. And that was his signature. And five months later, he shows back up at these honky-tonks. And he's got this guitar, but it it's it's different. It, he's added an extra string to it. It's now a seven string guitar. And he was playing things and singing things and and, and the way he was playing was just n nobody nobody had heard anything like it before in their life. It was just like Man, where'd that guy come from? Man, I'd come to hear this guy again. Woo, man. Uh, this story was featured in the movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Uh, I think they changed the name a little bit, but that's, that's where it came from. So anyway, they sold their soul. And Satan... Satan comes in to live in their lives and takes over their lives because they have sold out completely to the devil. They have been sealed 
in, in, a, in a different fashion. They have been sealed nonetheless. The Bible says they, have, they are twice dead. What does that mean? That means that they're already alive. They're alive now. But we won't even, we won't even, there's no way that they're ever going to get saved. No way, no how. They've sold out. God's turned them over to a reprobate mind. They're just waiting to die. Sure enough, look up, look up. There's a Wikipedia article called the 27 Club. Look up the number of rock and roll artists that have been killed or killed themselves at 27 years old. Look it up. Spirits. Okay. Here's another one. Justin Beaver, leave it to Bieber. He is portraying Lucifer. He is playing the part. He's coming down, falling down from the sky, coming down. Let's see, let's get back to that verse again. Put it up on the screen. Yeah. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee, and that they that thou wast created. So it looks like now that here comes Justin Beaver. making his showing to the world that he's got musical instruments built into his wings. And the fact that the wing, that he has wings sort of tells you his belief about his immortality, that he is a god. And I don't know how, how old he is now. I know he's not I know he's not a 14 year old boy anymore. But sold out completely. And he, Bieber claims to be Christian. Who believes that? Anybody? I don't. Now 1 Samuel 28, here is, here is an account, we have an actual description of what some of these familiar spirits will look like when they start appearing around the world. For Samuel 28, verse 7, Then Saul said unto his servants, Now God has already said in the previous verse, I am no longer speaking to Saul through the prophet, through uh, a dream, a vision, or through the Urim and Thummim. I'm not speaking to that prophet anymore. I'm not speaking to Saul ever again. So, Saul, knowing this, says, well, if I don't hear from God, I need to find out about this battle tomorrow. Then said Saul unto his servant, seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said unto him, behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went on and uh, two men with him. And they came to the woman by the night, and he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest uh, whom I shall... Um, 
Thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore, then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die. Why did you do this to me? Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, Alas, as the Lord liveth, there shall be no punishment. Well, that's not really true. It's not really true. Uh, there shall be no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring thee up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spake to Saul, saying, why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. The king said unto her, Be not afraid. Uh, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto him, um, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up and he is covered with a mantle, and she perceived, and Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped up with his face to the ground and bowed himself. Now let me ask you a question, and be, be honest. If you've ever seen a spirit, a haunt, a ghost, an apparition of any kind where there appears to be a man clothed and he has a mantle over his head where you cannot see his facial features i'd like to hear from you on that send that to pastor mike online at gmail.com and uh i would really like to hear from you that and and i would probably read that email online so if you don't want me to give your name out just let me know but if you've seen anything like that, a, a tall or short, um, living, some sort of entity in your home, in your car, in your workplace, over at your neighbor's house or whatever. If you've ever seen anything like that. Pastor Mike online at gmail.com. Write it down. Give me the details. Tell me as much of the story as you possibly can. Tell me what you think it was. Because uh, I'd like to hear your story. These here, down on the bottom, are familiar spirits. They're the Celtic they're called the Celtic, Celtic Hooded Genie. That's what they're called. The Celtic Genies. And they usually come dressed, covered with a mantle, faces covered. Uh, this is the album, the inside album art of Led Zeppelin um, with the um, what they call the hermit in there but it's the same hooded figure and he bears a pole and it's not just to walk with he bears a light with him and he is one who is a bringer of light he is a bringer of illumination 
Um, what was it? I, I rem, I'm trying to remember something I said to you many, many, many years ago. And I can't can't quite place my, my finger on it. But I've warned you about this before. The idea of a light bringer coming in to give you a false light. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no uh, great thing if his apostles turn out to be ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. God's going to judge them on the basis of their works, not the basis of, of their faith. That's pretty interesting to me. Now, here is, uh, I did a little digging today. Here's a couple on Oprah. And um, I don't know... I don't know what she was digging up this day, but she had this couple. I believe this is, they lived in the Chicago area that had several visitations by a hooded shadow man figure in their house. And this picture on the bottom is about the best picture they've got of that hooded uh, spirit entity that is in their house. Um, where's the other ones? I've got to I've got a couple more. Hang on a second. Let me, let me see if I can find them. Uh, Cuz it was uh I don't want to play the whole thing though. Yeah, I, w I won't. Let me let me try that. Let's let's watch this. Hello, guys. You might remember Kent, who documents the unusual happenings in his own home on his YouTube channel, The Ghosts of Carmel, Maine. Please head over there and leave him a sub if you can. People, that the spirit world is definitely real. Oh, there's no absolute doubt the spirit world is real. I mean, the stop I get here is absolutely shocking. And I just don't come here for a couple hours a day to do an investigation. I actually live in the house. I had a quick chat with Kent last week and I was asking for his permission to show you guys the unbelievable things that he could record in his home. Today is one of these days where Kent spends the day alone at his house and notices some inexplicable noises from his bedroom upstairs. This is where many things had happened in the past. Hello? As he approaches the bedroom, nothing seems to be out of place at first. Hello? Somebody up here? Did the source maybe make it downstairs by now? Hello? Little did Kent know that he was in for an unexpected surprise. Are you talking? You're gonna see something weird in a minute. Is that 
Son of a... There he is, right there. Son of a... Kent believes that an entity, which he calls Shadow Dude, likes to give him a good scare once in a while. This being has been seen in his bedroom several times, and it can only be suspected that it is fueled by negative energy and fright. Kent even has theories about who or what this shadow person could be. I see movement in the bedroom through that crack. You need to get out of here. Is that you, shadow dude? I don't ever turn this freaking light out. I don't even know how this light got out. I leave this light on because of certain reasons like this. So, who is Shadow Dude? Kent believes that Shadow Dude is a man who was living in Carmel, Maine I don't know Maine if this is true or not. In the early 1900s. That in, in fact, the lower I, right it, corner might be him, it's actually. A, it's not Kent is the sure dead that guy. The spirit still roams this area, and in spirit particular in that his house. house. It's a Shadow familiar Dude, spirit. was a very small man. And what people made is. fun of him back in the day. Could this a be reason enough for him to haunt Ken's home? Acting as hey guys, if, he if you wish to support me person. to enjoy many more videos, please consider becoming a member and joining my channel. You'll get custom emojis for my live streams and other exciting perks. And please take a second to subscribe to my channel Frostmare and hit the bell notification icon to never miss any of my new uploads. Apparently Shadow Dude also likes to stalk Kent in his living room, which means once in a while he lurks through one of his windows, grinning and even waving at him. There he is. Shadow Dude, I see you. Let's get back up into Kent's bedroom, where he tries to make contact with the entity that he captured moments earlier on his camera. Is it really an intelligent force that made Kent's EMF meter go off? Let's find out. Is that you knocking? Can you make this go off? And then the entity appears to come closer towards him. Can you stop it? In case you're not aware of it, but the higher the magnetic energy in the air, the faster the EMF meter will blink. Are you right here? Get back up from me. Whoa. Seemingly nervous, he then captures some unusual movement around the bedding area. It almost looks as if something underneath his blanket is moving. Some unusual noises later, the entity tries to get Ken's attention once more by tampering with the electricity in the bedroom. Whoa. It's one scene coming up and when we see that, I'll cut it off. making noise. That's not possible. 
this, there's no switch on this at all. Kent then feels that it is time to check out his garage, which is the place where all the caskets got built back in the day. It is to note that he visits this place only on rare occasions. Ken starts to ask a couple of questions about the potential past of this shack. And it doesn't take long until he can notice unusual growling sounds that seem to get closer. I can hear something growling or making noises. Then there is an eerie hissing noise. Hello? Can you answer my questions? Is that you banging? What follows next, in my opinion, is a voice saying, Kill Kent. Die. Die. Alright, something's in here. The entity lets Kent know that he's right about his assumption. Did you say something? Hi, right, you know what? I heard that. I'm sorry about that. Here. Hello. Bad language on there. Sorry right, about that. You know that what? I heard too. that. I'm getting out of here. I'm done with this. I don't think so. I'm not coming back in this garage again. One might almost feel inclined to believe that it is indeed Shadow Dude that plays some freaky games with Kent. What do you think? Could it be the same being? Maybe something even completely different? After all, Kent believes that there are at least three regular spirits that visit him on an almost daily basis. Something... Something touched me as that sound like it called me the F word. So I don't know. Uh, there's not something good in there, I can tell you that right now. Alright, seriously, who was making all the noise in my room last night? On one of the following mornings, Kent starts to hear inexplicable noises and voices again, and hits the record button on his camcorder right away. Who was making all that noise? Wow. This is certainly really odd. The voices could not be explained, since Kent was alone in the house. I can't say if it was Shadow Dude or not, Hello? but let me tell you, he made sure that Kent captured one of the best Class A ghost recordings that day. To not miss anything interesting, Kent decides to place his camcorder on the bottom of the steps. He states that he then left the house and that no family member was around at the time. Still. Something seemed to have remained upstairs. It clearly sounds that somebody was moving around upstairs. and peeks around the corner. This is extraordinary. I could not believe it when I saw it the first time. Have you ever seen something like that? But That's Shadow Dude was not finished.
After Kent had arrived back home and realized what had happened, he captured Shadow Dude on camera. Now the mowing. Duh. To me as well, it appeared like something that was wearing a long dark coat disappeared through the bedroom door. Nothing remained after this incident, but little did Kent know, Shadow Dude had even more in store for him. Okay, there it is. There this is, is what I wanted you to again. see. It's in the window. And it just falls out of the window and disappears. It is so surreal that I don't even know what to say to this particular capture. All I can think of is that I've never seen something. Okay. That's that's some weird, 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 weird stuff. Now I have um I have I have a story from a pastor's wife. A pastor's wife. A pastor friend of mine who has had uh, encounters like this in their home. And they've gone through and prayed in every room of the house and everything else in the world, which I think is about the best thing that you can do. But if you find yourself in that position, go through, read scripture, and pray, 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 and pray, and pray until those, until those spirits leave. Remember, they are more afraid of you because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, the Bible says. Somebody say amen. Job, Job's friend, had a visitation like this. He said in Job 4, Now a thing was sec secretly brought to me, and, and mine ear received a little thereof. Uh, in thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth on men, fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Then a spirit passed, be from, uh, passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eyes. There was silence. And I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man be more just than God? Uh, shall a man be more pure than his maker? Behold, he put no trust in his servants. And his angels he charged with folly. How much less in them which dwell in the houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before the moth. But he clearly sees uh, in his sleep, when it came upon him, a spirit that passed before his face. And he said, the hair of my flesh stood up. I got the goosebumps, goose pimples, or whatever. It stood still. I could not discern the form thereof. Hardly anybody has ever seen a face associated with these spirits. Unless, of course, they are going all out to pretend to put on the fact that they are um, a certain person, like Jesus Christ or whatever. But very rarely do you see a face associated with this. You always see a shadow. So I call them shadow men. They are ghosts. 
They are familiar spirits. They do inhabit houses, people. And they are trickster-like spirits. They will leave the all the cabinet doors open. They'll leave the water running. They'll turn the lights on and off. Do all kinds of weird things like that. Um, Matthew 8, 16. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were, listen to this, that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Matthew 10, 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. I am... I am currently rethinking my definition of the number 12. I had said earlier that I thought it represented God's promise. Ed Vello, who wrote a book, um, died a few years ago was a King James man, loved the old book, but he wrote a book on Bible numerics and it was just dynamite because he counted everything by hand. He didn't have a computer like I did. And he did some amazing work. But his idea of the number 12 was governmental authority. Now, I'm, I am sort of thinking in that direction. When he had called unto his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Boy, it'd be neat to have somebody like that now, wouldn't it? Matthew twelve forty three. when the unclean spirit is, listen to this now. For those of you who don't believe in haunted houses or people that can be haunted, people that can be possessed, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Um, then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. When he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and, the, and uh, taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. And I don't think it's talking about necessarily limited to an individual person. I think it absolutely could be um, applied to churches, denominations, church groups, church gatherings, church meetings, things like that. They the corruption that's moving into the denominations is because the evil men and seducers are waxing worse and worse, the Bible says. Did you catch that? Evil men and seducers are waxing worse and worse. Um... That always makes me think of this of the seven chakras. The root chakra, sacral chakra, solar plexus chakra, heart chakra, throat chakra, third eye chakra, crown chakra. You know what that is? 
That's the exact opposite of having the 12 spirits of God in you, or the seven spirits, excuse me, yeah, seven spirits of God in you. It's the exact opposite of that. You read Isaiah 11, you find out what those spirits are, and then go to this, and how difficult is it to actually achieve these seven things and gain them in your life? There are people who spend their entire lifetime chanting and doing everything else. You can't get it. Meanwhile, God gives it to the worst of us, the poorest of us, the most loved of, of us, because it's a gift. It's a free gift. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. I can't pay for it. I can't earn it. I can't work for it. God just gives it to me. And that's how simple this is. God just, here's some gifts for you. How's that? He gave gifts to men, the Bible says. Mark 6, verse 7, he called them unto him the twelve, and he began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. Absolutely gave him power over unclean spirits. Now, Revelation 18, you're going to like this. Does a, do Are there haunted houses? Do spirits dwell in houses that men build? I am of the firm opinion that, yes, they do. I, after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, and having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, why did it use the word bird? there because we're talking about spirits that fly around beelzebub lord of the things that fly around he's their god he's their lord he's their leader the cage of every unclean and hateful bird these things need to be locked up so they can't get out and do any harm. Amen. So let me let me see if you can make this connection here. La cage à foul. Pardon my French. Do you know what that means? First of all, it's a, I think it's a play which was turned into a movie about a couple of gay guys. It means the birdcage. The birdcage. There was... Does anybody recognize this? If you watch the movie Tombstone about Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday and the Clantons and the shootout at OK Corral and Boot Hill, then you'll know that there was a theater in Tombstone, Arizona, called the Birdcage Theater. And the Birdcage 
is the hold of every foul, unclean foul, and every hateful bird. Man, I tell you, there is, if you watch the movie Tombstone, there is, there is so much biblical symbolism in that movie. It's just unreal. Isaiah 13, 19, Babylon. This, this is connected to Isaiah, uh, Revelation 18. Babylon, the glory of the kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there, and the wild beasts of the dragons of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses and dragons in their pleasant palaces and her time is near to come and her days shall not be prolonged these are buildings one of them is a mock-up the one on the right is a mock-up of a building that they want to build this is a building on the left that has actually been built Because you see, in the East, all of those nations over there love dragons. They love them. They are their gods. They are their progenitors. The ones that seeded them into this world. That's what they believe. Of course, they believe, I think, that their first emperor was a uh, son of a human woman and a dragon. Let's see if I have any. I need sound effects. Where's sound effects at? Yeah, come on. Ah, uh, well, I'm out of time anyway. But there you have it, people. Ask the question. Look at, look at this and ask the question. Do spirits inhabit houses? <laughs> yeah, there it is right there. Uh, uh, honey, I think we've got a dragon outside our door. Ah, honey, you're crazy. Come back in here. We'll watch Roseanne again. Or, Le or Reba. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Um, I may. I may try to do the study. And um, talk a little bit about. How a person becomes. Possessed of. Of a devil. And I'm interested in that. Because I know it happens. And I know it happens to very young people. And while I can't be. Um, I, I don't know every child in the world. And how they get. Possessed by devils. But. I do believe that some children actually are at a young age. Well, what brought them to that? Well, that's something to think about. So I want you to help me pray about that. Help me think about it. And uh, he's trying to get a hold of me here. Oh, yeah, I see that, Steve. Thank you very much. Anyway, God bless you. I love you. You're the reason why we do what we do. Keep us in your prayers. Pray for my mama. Pray for my little grandbaby. 
Graceland. We love her so much. Pray for our church, our ministries. Pray that for our radio stations, we can get them stabilized back on the air full time. Beat the devil. Beat him. Um, we will be doing another feeding uh, toward Christmas time. Only this time we're going to give them uh, a goat. Each of the villages, we're going to give them a goat. They're going to burn it on the burn it on the fire on the literally on the fire. They're going to roast it with everything in it. everything in it and they'll eat everything that's in it tell God thank you that you live in such a wonderful country amen I love you think Bible people